Blessings, friend. This is Marcus Stevenson, Jr., and I want to give you a personal welcome to our telecast and tell you how excited I am to be able to speak into your life. We don't believe in coincidence. We believe God has supernaturally ordained for this connection, and I believe that God has something special in store for you through this ministry and through this broadcast. As you continue to watch, please do not hesitate to go to the phone and call us whether you want to give donations or whether you want to ask for prayer. And we assure you that we will be there ready to see you through whatever your need may be. Also, I want to encourage you for more information about our ministry, to please go to our website. I believe God has something special for you during this broadcast. Stay tuned and you will be blessed. So Jesus, let me I'll tell you about Jesus. He sees them on a ship and they get afraid. Isn't it amazing? That as soon as we see a faith movement, the thing we should be excited about, we're afraid of. And most Christian people are afraid of the faith they've been talking about. God's a healer. Then you lay hands on somebody and get healed. I don't know about that. Let me see the video. I was somewhere and somebody's leg grew out. You should have saw the people. I don't know about that. Do we not preach this stuff? It's quiet up in here. Come on, I need to smile. Come on, talk to the preacher in here. Come on, look at me and say, come on, preacher, come on, preacher. Miracles happen to them that have faith. God began to show me this some years ago as I began to seek him. And I'm almost finished here. I began to seek him. He showed me this every time, just about 90-some percent of the time before Jesus prayed for somebody. You know what he asked them? Do you believe I'm able to do this? Most people come to church and spectate off of somebody else's faith. But how many know you have to believe what God is able to do for you in your own life? And most times when people said they believed or when people had a need, what did Jesus say? According to your faith. Let it be done unto you. That's a word for somebody in here. Some of you worry about what somebody else think about what God told you. But I'm here to prophesy to you according to your faith. Well, my husband don't support me. My wife don't support me. My mom and them don't support me. It don't matter. According to your faith. Oh, man. Your faith is on trial like the Bible says. But you can pass this test of your faith. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. I feel faith coming alive. I said, I feel faith coming alive. I ain't faith somehow. See, this is what we have to learn as spiritual people. I don't walk by how I see. I don't walk by what it look like in the flesh. It don't look good sometimes in the flesh, do it? Sometimes it look bad. Sometimes it look horrible. Uh, somebody going to be honest with me in here? I mean, sometimes. Whoo. I, I learned this years ago. I used to travel more and more. And, and, and uh, I used to do some revivals and show up some places. First night, two people in revivals. My God. And I remember that happened the first time. I need a better to invite me here, two folks. I don't mind preaching two people. You know, my, come on now. But I would begin to minister to those two people. They get blessed, get healed, get delivered. Next night, they'll bring whole families with them. Hello, woman at the well. God touches one Samaritan. She go tell the rest of the Samaritans. Now look at a whole group of folks coming in over one woman's faith. Some of us so worry about what's not here in the flesh, but don't know. All you need is a faith increase, and what not here in the flesh, when your faith get increased, it'll happen in the realm of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Who wouldn't want to please a God that has treated us so good and did us so right? Who wouldn't want to please a God who has been that through thick and thin? Who would want to please a father that never walked out on his children? I want to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is, that he exists. Do you really believe God is God? If God is God, if he's the Lord of your life, why come you don't believe that he can do anything but fail? If Jeremiah was here, 
If Abraham was here, they'll tell you nothing is too hard for God to do. You name one problem you got. Name one issue you got. Name one sickness you're going through. And I'll tell you nothing is too hard for God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. He said, he that cometh out must believe that he is. So Peter saw Jesus walking on the water. And he said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to you on the water. Notice, don't just allow me to come to you, but bid me to come to you on the water. What was he saying? I want to step out of this ship, and I want to make a movement of faith, because I, say, I see you have moved in faith. Now let me get out of this confinement that I'm in, this complacency, and let me step out by faith and do what you're doing, God. And that's what some of you ought to do. This is why we come to church and we hear men and women of God speak. This is why God gives us signs and wonders to build your faith up. Not to build your faith to stay in the ship. When you see how God used others, when you see how other people can do what God said they can do, that ought to build your faith. Uh -uh, I'm, I'm stepping out of this boat I'm in. Who in here can say, hey, preacher, there's a boat I've been in. There's a ship I've been in. I've been stuck in this realm too long. It's time for me to step out of this thing. Can I get honest for just a few minutes here? Sometimes we know I've just been stubborn too long. I've been rebellious too long. I've been just lazy too long. I've been stuck on this little pity party. See, I don't want to have no church here. I've been stuck on this pity party too long. Let me get out of this ship. I've been making excuses for the last 15 years. And God, I'm tired of being stuck in this ship. It's time for me to make a step of faith. You know, sometimes you got to be honest with yourself. When I get finished running, my mama, my daddy, my grandma, my sister, my husband, my wife, my children, my preacher, my first lady, I got to sometimes look at my own self and ask myself, where is my faith? When the church don't move in faith, the church is out of order. This is why God told David, don't number the people. You know why? Because he didn't want David putting more confidence in how many people he had. <laughs> oh my God. He wanted him putting his confidence in the strength of God, not in the strength of people. See, sometimes we put our confidence in, in how much money we got. How many folks can't agree with us? Oh, man. <laughs> Come on, am I doing all right? <laughs> but if God says something, I don't care if it's like it's you against the world. If God be for you, Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. He's more than the whole world that seem like he's against you. Sometimes when you walk in my face like you standing alone, other folks planned out saying, I don't see it. I don't get it. God didn't give them the vision. God told Abraham, as far as you can see, that's what I'm going to give you. There's somebody in here, there's an inspiration in your heart. There's some things you're aspiring to be. Some of you young folks got some business ideas. And the first thing they never want to do is plant some generational curse over your mind. Well, your daddy was a failure, you're going to be a failure. Mama was a failure, you was a failure. Tell the devil it stops here because I got faith. Maybe mama didn't see what I see. Man, I wish I had a church. Maybe daddy didn't see what I see. I'm not running down mama and daddy, but I refuse to run down the vision God gave me as far as I can see. That's what God going to bless me with. Some of y'all going to be some trailblazers. I prophesy to you. Tell somebody I'm going to be a trailblazer. You know what a trailblazer is? You're creating a trail. You're creating a legacy for the people to come behind you. That generational curse been over that last name you carry. Tell that devil that thing is broken now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. It's broken now by faith. That's why Abraham had to get away from those things. Because God was saying, I'm setting you apart. You're going to break generational curses. And you're going to be a trailblazer. How do you know he was a trailblazer? Because he was the father of faith. And you don't hear that much about the people before Abraham, but every time we read Bibles, all you hear all throughout the Old Testament, I'm the God of Abraham. I wish I had a church. I'm the God of Isaac. 
I am the God of Jacob. Who was Isaac? Isaac was Abraham's son. Who was Jacob? Jacob, or Abraham was Jacob's grandfather. Abraham started a new legacy by his faith. And some of you all, the devil is after you about where you're going because you're changing generational curses and the promises to you and to your children and to your children's children. Give God praise and say, thank you, Lord. I'm breaking this generational curse. My seed going to be blessed. My seed going to be healed. My seed going to be prosperous. If you believe it, shout glory in this house. I said shout glory. Tell somebody I'm blessed beyond measure. Look at somebody and say, my faith is what got me blessed. If you believe it, say yes. Hey, glory. Glory to God. Give me my five minutes. Give me my five minutes and I'm done. He that comes to God must believe that he is. My dad told me something. He's my overseer. My pastor told me some years ago. He said, what it takes to get God, it takes to keep God. Ain't it somehow we can start off operating in faith? Some of us have so much faith in you guys say, I mean, if the preacher told you to stand up and dance, you'd be all out of, all out of rhythm. You'd be just something. <laughs> now you know more. You, you, you've been praying five hours a day, but you didn't pray so much you disobedient. You ain't talking to me. You know how cute we are. Now, I, just, God, I, just, I ain't been here in a little while, so I just tell y'all I'm here. You know how we got these cute Christians now? Give God praise. You, Neighbor right beside you can't hear your hand clap. You all in the club when you was unsaved out there. <laughs> Can I buy you, man? And, and craziest people thought you were just because you used faith enough to praise God. You left out heal. Don't take your walk down memory lane. You left out delivered. Came in, shoulders down, knuckles dragging the ground like he was old silverback. Left out, shoulders up, chin up, smile on your face. See, we try to make stuff harder than what it is. What it took to get God dead. <laughs> it take to keep God now. And God bless some of us because you use your faith. And the same faith God blessed then is the same faith God will bless now. Oh, hallelujah. I know. Sounds crazy. You got to try it sometimes. He that comes down, I believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder. I don't know why people get this thing, this myth about God, like God just want to kill everybody. God ain't about killing everybody. You know, that really ain't the spirit of God. Jesus had to tell his own disciples that. He said, I didn't come to destroy men's lives. I come to save it. I get worried of some preacher. All they preach is, he going to die, he going to die. But why are you preaching to me then if I'm going to die? Let me leave me alone let me die. Don't waste my time telling me what you already know going to happen. Let me enjoy the little time I got left before I die. Amen? You want me to come to church, you hear me, you going to die, you going to die. I want to hear that. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. The Bible said, in him we live. In him we move. And in him we have our being. When I get faith, in faith I should live. In faith I should move. And in faith I should have my being. Amen. Everything God says to us, he tests us to see if we're willing to obey him. There's some of you in here right now, you may feel in your heart, you may know in your heart, I have not been obedient like I should. God ain't about beating you up. But you need to repent and walk back into faith. And stop thinking your pride going to change God. <laughs> I can tell y'all something, I'm not trying to be super tough when God gives me something, I just give it. Some of y'all wonder why your prophecy has been held up. You wonder why that gift heaven came forth in your life. God looks and he judges your heart. 
And if he don't see faith in your heart, he cannot move for you if it ain't according to faith. That's why he told Peter, I keep going there. I'm trying not to go to that scripture. I keep going there. Though. That's why he told Peter, it is I, be not afraid, come to me on the water. See, the other disciples saw him too. But they weren't willing to step out by faith. It can be a bunch of us in church that see and hear the same thing. But where's my Peters? Where's my people that say, I didn't just come for a show. I didn't just come to see what God or hear what God can do. I come to hear, see it, so I can step out and use my faith. Amen. Peter steps out of the boat. He said, Lord, if it be you bid me to come, steps out of the boat, begins to walk on the water. Isn't it something? The same thing Jesus did, he did. Some of you looking at other folks, you wonder, how did that business get blessed like that? Because they stepped out the boat. I don't know how to say this any other way other than just say it. Can I just say it? Can I just have a barbershop talk here for a second? Some of them show ain't smarter than you. You get that on your way home. You know it and I know it. It ain't because they got more sense than you got. Because they use their faith. It ain't because they know more than you know. Now, I don't say that running nobody down, but it's a fact. Some of you know it's a fact. <laughs> it's because they use their faith. Churches don't grow because the preacher can preach so well. It grows when people in the ministry use their faith to follow the vision of the leader. Amen. The enemy's after your faith more than he's after the end in your life. Because just like he didn't want Peter to step out, he don't want some of us to step out of that same complacency you've been in. You've been stuck like gorilla glue in that same spot. And you've been talking about what you ain't doing. You ain't did it the last 10 years. Don't get mad at me. I'm like that commercial. Get glad. God sending your word to charge your faith up. And some of us are so afraid you're going to fail that you ain't took the time to see the success God has for you. Peter steps out the boat. Yeah, but he fell when he stepped out. Yeah, but he stepped out. Ain't that somehow all people see in your life is your failures, but they never see how you step out. Can you imagine the mockery the disciples was given when he began to sink? But here's the thing, though, about stepping out of his boat. If he never would have stepped out of his boat, he never would have knew what he could do. And some of you in here, you're trying to make yourself believe what you can do by just good speeches and fair words. And God is saying, I know you can do it. The problem is you ain't got confidence in what you can do because you won't step out and try it. Oh, man. He steps out and walks on the water. And as soon as he begins to look at all his issues, he begins to sink. But Jesus, being the Jesus he is, stretched out his hand, picked him up, pulled him up. You know what he said to him? Wherefore did you doubt me? And now some of you in here, this message ain't just information, it's confirmation. You've already stepped out of your boat. But along the way, when you stepped out your boat, you may be in an area in your life where you're sinking now. And God said, even though you stepped out of your boat and you're sinking right now, I still got a word for you. I want to pull and stretch out my hand to you so you can get up from this sinking place. But the Jesus I serve, this is why I love him. Because even when he pulls you up, he always gives you a word of wisdom so you can stay up. He pulls up Peter, brother hell, and after he pulls him up, he said, wherefore did you doubt me? Now notice, Peter wasn't the only person there. There were other disciples in the ship. But he pulls up Peter, and he don't say, did the other disciples doubt me? He said, wherefore did you doubt me? And Jesus didn't ask them about they down because they never stood up by faith anyways. <laughs> he said, wherefore did you doubt me? Are you still here? Glory to God. Look to somebody and say, where's your faith at? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. He that comes to God must believe that he is, that he has rewarded them that diligently seek him. Go to 2 Corinthians 13 real quick and I'm done. 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and I'm finished. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Are you flipping there? Tell somebody my faith's on trial. Hallelujah. You know, in every trial, a good testimony will get you off that trial. And that's sometimes what God is trying to bring back to our remembrance, the testimonies you have when you use your faith. Because those testimonies will pull you through this trial. Hallelujah. You just think back. Every time you use your faith, God always came through. Every time you use your faith, something good always came out of it. Every time you use your faith, at the end of it all, you knew God showed he was God. Amen. Watch this verse. Oh, ain't nobody mad about the devil. Verse 5. Examine yourselves. Now, nah, that's good. Because most people have half their time discerning somebody else. But never take the time to look at their own self. You know, most of the time, even in church, uh, one of the biggest deceitful things about even churches and ministry is when you have a group of folks that think they're so spiritual, they come and discern everybody else but themselves. They can tell you about everybody else in that church but their own selves. But the Bible said, examine yourself. You know what I mean? Examine yourself. Check your own self out. See what's in your own self. But he didn't just say examine yourself. He said examine yourselves. See whether. Whether ye be in what? In the faith. Now, that's enough right now to make us think. Before you leave this building today. You know I, I like to be honest about everything. Especially when I'm speaking and preaching. And I made this statement earlier. Some of us who are concerned about who's not here. If you're not careful you're distracted. From the word God given you while you here. And we have to learn how to take God at his word. And realize God ain't missed his person today. God has not missed his mark. God saw you before this day ever existed. And he knew you would be here and listen to this preacher screaming, hollering, and fussing at you. Can I buy amen? And God want to get this word deposited in your heart. Because he wants you to operate in faith. Not how you feel. Not how you see it in the flesh. Not what you think in the flesh. But operating in faith. A faith in such a way that God, whatever you said to me, I choose to believe it. You know, Jesus, being who he was, he constantly taught his disciples and constantly said things to his disciples to try to build their faith up. And as great as Jesus was, that was sometimes he got aggravated and got grieved because he kept saying, how long do I have to be with you, O oh, ye of little faith? You know, if there's one thing that grieves God, it's when we have no faith. Especially when he didn't give us word after word. We didn't see miracles after miracles. Jesus got so grieved one time, one of his disciples, he said, do you not remember the, the two fish and five loaves? Do you not remember how I fed the 4,000 when, when we had other fish and other loaves there? And sometimes I wonder, do some of us that are Christian people, do we even remember the miracles God have worked in our life? And how dare we not have faith now? Your faith means everything. It's a lot of things I know the devil used to try to discourage me, try to dismay me. I, I, I don't say everything. I see stuff even when I'm speaking and when I'm preaching. The devil uses all types of stuff to try to throw discouragement. But I just learned I'm going to use my faith. I don't care what. And some of you ought to stand up in your mind and say, Devil, I don't care what you throw my way. I'm using my faith. I don't care what. Why? Because your faith will make you whole. Glory to God. I said your faith will make you whole. Lift your hands while you're sitting. Father, we thank you for this word today. Bless you for the truth that's been spoken. We take this moment to examine ourselves. God, I curse this witchcraft spirit that's trying to overtake your people, God. Trying to overtake the ministry and trying to overtake the minds and hearts of your people, Lord. We take dominion over this spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. We thank you for giving us faith beyond measure. Faith to arise when the enemy say we should be down. Faith to stand when it seems like, God, we've done all we could do. Faith to go forward when it seems like all types of things are fooling us backwards. Oh, Master, we believe you. 
God, there's any unbelief in us, we ask you to help our unbelief, God. Pull our faith up where it needs to be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Glory God, in the name of Jesus. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I don't know you. I never seen you. But I don't think I've never seen you before. But don't leave here thinking little of yourself. The Holy Ghost building you up from the inward parts to the outward parts. Because I see this spirit of trying to really tear you down. Oh, And there's been some people around you that have tried to speak joyous things to you and great things to you. And sometimes you hear them, but it's almost like still there's a warfare in your mind trying to make you think so little and so low about yourself. But the Holy Spirit said that you are the apple of his eye. Oh, ba 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 ho son, re de de bo ho shata. Yi la ba 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 ha sa. There's a stronghold called anger that has been rusting over your mind and your heart for a long time. For that spirit of anger, God's cursing it to the root right now. Yi la ba 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 ho shan, re de de bo ho sa. There's a spirit of anger that you have carried for a long, long little time. You know what I'm talking about? But God's cursing that thing to the root. And the core of that anger comes from really low self-thinking about yourself. There's a spirit called low self-esteem that Satan's tried to plant. But God's building up your self-esteem. Because you mean something to God. You're pressing before the eyes of God. Do you have a child? Do you? You have two kids? I see one child in particular. Is any of your kids here with you tonight? I see one child in particular. I'm praying for both of them, but there's one child in particular I'm praying for. I'm sending the word to their body. In the name of Jesus. Stretch your hand this way. Father, we speak the word. We send the word. We send the word. We send the word to that child, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Master, this whole household. We curse every stronghold, God. Let this anointing go home with her tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, ba 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 ho sando. Is it a boy and a girl? Two girls. It's two girls. Glory to God. How old are they? 12 and 13. We're praying for them. I believe in God for them. I'm trusting God for them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for this anointing will go home with you too. It's going to go home. It's going to be peace on your mind tonight, woman. The spirit of not being able to sleep at night is cursed to the root. You're going to sleep like somebody never had a baby tonight. In the name of Jesus, you watch what I tell you. Somebody give him praise tonight. We're so excited that we were able to speak into your life. We pray and hope that you stay in connection with our ministry. You see the information on your screen as you have when seen throughout this broadcast. Please do not hesitate to call us, whether it's to give donations or whether it's for prayer. We sincerely want to stay in connection with you as we do not believe this was coincidence. We believe that God has supernaturally connected you with our ministry. And I want to personally invite you to join us again for our next broadcast. Even consider joining us in person. For more information, you can go to our website or you can call us on the phone. We would love to hear from you. God bless you. Until next time, this has been Marcus Stevenson, Jr. Ministry.